Jonathan Dunn. Perception versus reality. Perception versus reality. Jonathan Dunn. September 9th, 2008. The alarm clock went off and the day started just like so many other days. It always amazes me how a day can be just flowing along so smoothly. And then in the blink of an eye, disaster. That is how September 9th, 2008 would end for me. Madam Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, I arrived home from work that particular evening and my former wife, Melanie, who is a spectacular human being, was waiting at the front door for me. I knew something at that point was amiss. When she told me that she wanted to have a conversation with me, I got that really sinking feeling in my stomach. She let it be known to me that particular evening that despite our best efforts, that she felt our marriage needed to end. And that she was taking our two children, Kaylee and Gunnar, and that she would be moving away. When you move, there are moving expenses. She let it be known to me that there were some credit cards with my names on them. The sum total on those said cards was $57,000. I thought to myself at that very moment though, hey, at least I've got the house. <laughs> she said, wait a minute. It's eight months deep in foreclosure. Mm. This is the one that really got me, though. I don't like being on the phone. And she said she was going to have her cell phone shut off. And that I was going to be getting lots of fun phone calls throughout the day from people wanting money. I can assure you that when she told me this news, I wasn't going, yeah, this is the greatest day I've ever had. I actually thought... Where is a hole I can go crawl in and maybe die? I thought if I went to bed and woke up that none of that would be waiting for me. Things were actually about to get way worse. September 11th, 2008, I got home from work. There was no cake. There was no one there to sing happy birthday to me. There were no presents. There was a plate with chicken quesadillas on it and this card that my daughter had written to me. I sat down to eat my lonely dinner and my eyes immediately went to, you are the best dad in the world. Boom. It was a major punch in the gut because I knew that that was the furthest thing from the truth. I knew I wasn't doing what my dad had done for me, but this is the one that was the worst medicine of all. Those are pictures of things that my daughter had observed that I loved. Four things. At eight years old, I could tell you that my daughter loved cheese fries from Outback Steakhouse. That was my idea of being a good father. Once again, I can assure you that my perception of this event <coughs> wasn't this is the greatest day of my life. I thought I am failing miserably. What I didn't realize at the time was that this card, it was the greatest gift one could ever receive because it set me on a journey. I went to bed that night and I prayed. I had my own, for me, come to Jesus moment. And I was about to learn three of the greatest lessons of my life that I'm going to share with you here this evening. The first, I finally understood what the word passion meant and how it is necessary for all things in our life. It means to be willing to suffer deeply for what you love. It stirs you deep inside. It allows you to access parts of your brain you never knew you had. And I knew when I went to bed that night that I had to become the greatest father in the world and that everything else would fall into place. 
So over the course of the journey, I aligned my talents with a company that I believed deep inside myself would allow me to become the greatest father in the world and pay off those credit cards. <laughs> I sat down with my mentor that very first day and he said, I'm going to ask you to do something that I have a feeling you've never been very good at. I'm going to ask you to develop some humility. And what that means is, what I learned, it's being humble. It's being coachable. It's being teachable. It's being subservient, giving to others. In fact, if you study the word, the root is humus, which is the rich, dark brown organic soil that is necessary for growth. I also understood that I was a horrible communicator at this point. And after I got remarried, I said, I really need to address this a little bit more than I have previously addressed it. The dots were now being connected. It's how I ended up here at Toastmasters. On this journey I was on, I had learned of a word that would be inherent to my own personal culture, which was Gensha. I knew I would start practicing it right away, and now I understand that I meant to also to share it with each and every one of you. From this day forward, consider never treating or talking to someone in a manner that would make them feel small. When I was going through these events, I thought it was horrible. I now understood that I was being loved at a level that I never fully comprehended. I always ask myself now, where is the opportunity? Each and every one of us, we eat the same food, we come from the same place. We all have the opportunity to wake up every morning and say, God, good morning, or good God. September 11th, 2012, I received this card from my daughter. Inside of it, she calls me the greatest dad in the world. Madam Contest Master.